Hello, my name is Las Ayala. I am the founder of Illegal the Project, a nonprofit whose mission is to humanize the conversation around immigration and push for improvements to guest worker programs that benefit workers and the U.S. economy. You might have already seen my first documentary where I share my story as an immigrant fleeing a civil war in El Salvador, crossing the U.S.-Mexico border as a teenager, adapting to life in the United States, and overcoming many obstacles along the way to achieve the American dream and become a successful businessman. In the documentary Illegal, I discuss the topic of undocumented immigration and provide a solution to the currently broken system by reforming current guest worker programs. The film that you are now watching dives deeper into the topic of undocumented immigration and shows the need for a legal, functional, and humane guest worker program that meets the demands of our economy. So you might ask, why should I care? It is a fact which is accepted by economists, business leaders, and politicians in both parties that U.S. industries such as agriculture, hospitality, reforestation, and construction depend on foreign labor and the need is only growing. In recent decades, this demand has been met by a supply of undocumented workers. The increasing demand for labor by U.S. industries, the opportunities for guest workers to support their families back home with better pay, and the loose enforcement of regulations and laws that guard against illegal employment has created the scenario we are in today. This system of illegal employment has resulted in the dehumanization and criminalization of foreign workers and costly disruptions to the businesses and industries that depend on them. In this film, I will speak with various business owners and foreign workers across different industries to better understand the issue and possible solutions. When you think of migrant labor, the first industry that might come to mind is agriculture. But that is only the tip of the iceberg. There are many other industries that depend on foreign labor. For instance, reforestation. Martin Lopez is the business administrator of Table Rock Forestry, a family-owned reforestation business in the Pacific Northwest. Their focus is land management, for various agencies such as Oregon Department of Forestry, conservation specialists, and private landowners. Each year, Martin's team provides important labor-intensive services such as land clearing, fuel reduction, prescribed burning, and fire suppression to preserve nature, ecosystems, and reduce the threat of wildfires, which have had a devastating impact on Oregon's economy in recent years. Martin's team is essential for wildfire prevention as they remove excess fuels on the ground to reduce the impact of the catastrophic fires that are devastating our communities, economy, forests, environment, and way of life. Since 2015, Table Rock Forestry has utilized the H2B guest worker program. Martin says that guest workers have been a huge asset to the company as their work ethic is incredible. Martin does not believe these workers are stealing American jobs because in his experience, seldom do domestic workers want to work in such a physically demanding environment or many U.S. workers have other options available to them. On the contrary, Martin believes that the H2B program not only benefits guest workers, if we all examine closer, we would see that everyone would benefit with an improved program. I think that it's something that it's, it's a blessing for those that are able to come because it gives them a privilege to come and make more of an income that they ever would. There's a lack of resource that Mexico has to give back to their people and the money. And when they do do this kind of work, they get paid very poorly over there. So they get the ability to come here, work themselves in the way of doing and providing a service and also get paid what they deserve to get paid. It's a program that we need to better. I think we need to 
show a lot of the people that give it the negativity what positive outcomes do they have not only financially but like in our case environmentally or in our case kind of show them that we're giving them an opportunity to better their lives in one way or another and it also helps out small businesses martin comments that if the h2b program were updated and improved he could complete more work, maintain a higher quality of work, and reduce the impact of wildfires that are now ravaging the Pacific Northwest. We currently go through a rigorous process of a nine month to six month waiting period to find out what actually happens with our H2B program. And like I mentioned, every month is a nail biter because one little thing could mess up a lot. We're at 60,000 per year in H2B, for us in H2B program. So it's 30 at the beginning, at the beginning of the cap and 30 at the end of the cap. That's not enough. We hire up to 45 employees. If it was possible, I would probably max out at 100 if I could. We had the opportunity to speak with two guest workers who have come to work annually for Table Rock Forestry. Eh, la oportunidad que nos dan pues es, es muy buena porque el dinero que juntamos de, de aquí pues ya nos, eh, nos beneficia ya para, pues, para tener una vida más estable. Tu, tu tiempo de trabajo es mejor pagado y puedes dar una mejor, un mejor estilo de vida a, a la familia que se queda en México. Antes de venir pues, yo, mi, mi salario era de 1500 pesos a la semana que más o menos vienen siendo que unos seis mil uh, al, al mes más o menos yo soy ingeniero industrial este y me parece que el tiempo que tú inviertes en muchas cosas en México es mal remunerado es decir, mal pagado eh, yo aquí vengo y gano en el día lo que ganaría como ingeniero en una semana ya El, el distanciamiento es, es un poquito com, complicado, pero se entiende, o sea, por la situación económica, situación social, todo lo que se, se vive en México actualmente, es, es entendible que uno tenga la necesidad de, de buscar una manera de, de vivir diferente. Es algo pesado y riesgoso, la verdad, porque pues, tiene algo de riesgos de trabajo uno con, el, con el, la motosierra y, y la verdad sí es algo riesgoso de, de una cortada o, o aventarse uno un, un pino encima o de hecho también las laderas muy inclinadas también torceduras caídas y aparte también serpientes que también hay a veces que nos hemos topado que agarramos las brazadas de ramas y, y nos pasan por aquí las serpientes se nos bajan Las personas que no, no gustan de, de que alguien venga de fuera a trabajar aquí con ellos, pues yo creo que no venimos a robar nada. Venimos a aportar nuestro tiempo, no, nuestra capacidad, porque la empleamos yo creo que al máximo. Venimos a, a darle pues esa fuerza que tiene este país. ¿sí? No hablo nada más de esta zona, sino todo. Usted me decía de estamos en, en, un, en un estado verde, California, que cómo sufre de incendios. Entonces, cuando hay necesidad de apoyar en incendios, pues vamos a los incendios. Arriesgamos nuestras vidas, apoyamos con lo más que se puede. Entonces, yo creo que en lugar de vernos como rivales, hay que vernos como compañeros. En today's economy, immigration plays a key role across many industries. One of the most notable is agriculture. Immigrants and guest workers alike significantly contribute, and without them, our food supply, quality, and quantity of food would certainly be at risk. Susie and Steve Fry are the owners of Fry Family Farms, which was established 30 years ago. Their farming business has expanded to more than 90 acres of vegetables, flowers, and berries being grown throughout Southern Oregon. Their farm store in Medford, Oregon offers a wide variety of organic produce, 
plants and flowers. Today, their main focus is to meet the demand for organic produce. Presently, their number one concern for the farm's future is labor, the cost of it, and who will perform the jobs. Since picking fruit and vegetables is timely and labor is tough and not for the faint of heart, Steve is deeply concerned about finding the help he needs. And on top of that, since his farm is considered small, based on the 90 acres, he is skeptical about the feasibility of current guest worker programs. He believes that big agriculture in places such as Salinas, California is where the guest worker program is manageable and can be utilized effectively. We are stuck kind of in a place that's very difficult to manage labor-wise. All of USDA and ag, supporting ag, is based on huge ag, big ag, industrial ag. We are in a category of small ag, and there's actually no help in the immigration scene. So the guest worker programs don't really work for us. We don't have the capital to do that. Who's going to fund that? Not only is the guest worker system less favorable for small farms in terms of logistics and managing the red tape, but there are also more expenses to manage. However, illegal employment can be just as costly when you factor in the disruptions when ICE raids businesses and arrests workers. This has an impact on the cost of producing our food. When it comes to supporting their businesses, small operations like Fry Family Farms have few options. Because Steve cannot tap into the current guest worker program due to the amount of red tape and bureaucracy standing in the way for smaller farms, he is unsure if his labor problem will be solved. You can't pay somebody $10 an hour and expect them to stay with you. So the whole small farm thing, in my estimation, and I'm pretty jaded, but I don't see small farms being here when you have grandchildren. It's not gonna happen. It's all gonna be huge, mega corporate farms. Steve believes that with improvements to the guest worker program, large and small farms would benefit greatly and his business would be sustainable through migrant labor. Not only would this benefit his business, but give guest workers a legal and humane access to employment while allowing them to return seasonally to their families and invest their hard earned dollars in their local economies. In the long run, economic stability in their home countries would also help stabilize the number of immigrants for the U.S. as well as eventually reduce the need for illegal border crossings. It would change the landscape of farming. Small farms would actually thrive. Small farms would thrive if we had a real comprehensive immigration policy where they could come, get a little card, just like they did back in the Reagan era, and they'd come over here and they'd work, and they'd do their thing for six, seven, eight, nine, nine months a year, and they'd go home. They want to go home. They don't want to stay here. They love it at home. How would you like to be in that position where they're getting 50 cents a day? They're not going to steal anybody's job because nobody wants this job. Until this immigration reform takes place and the politics subside, agriculture will continue to plummet, hurting businesses and jeopardizing our domestic food supply. We need more help. And if you're gonna tie it up at the borders, you're, you're stopping progress. You're holding back a lot of people and you're killing small farms. Local food will be gone. Valley View Winery is located near the nationally recognized historic town of Jacksonville in the Rogue Valley of Southern Oregon. The vineyard and winery are family owned by Mark and Michael Wisnowski. Their parents established it in 1972, making the winery the oldest in Southern Oregon. Besides the 35 acres dedicated to grapes, the brothers also grow 25 acres of hemp. According to Mark, the wine industry has grown tremendously over the years in the region. It is a labor-intensive crop where the romance of picking grapes disappears after about 20 minutes. Because of the difficult labor and uncomfortable conditions, Mark has adjusted the salary to make it 
competitive and so that workers are fairly compensated. On the other side, hemp has dramatically changed the playing field as it has a greater profit margin than wine grapes, allowing Mark to pay more for harvesters who focus on hemp. Since the Wisnowski brothers began to grow hemp, they hire 15 to 25 employees full-time during the harvest season, year after year. With the hemp industry currently booming, we asked Mark if he is considering the guest worker program to meet the labor demands of his line of work. We haven't done it in terms of too much manual labor. We keep a crew, and that's also the advantage of the hemp is that, is that it allows us to keep a year-round crew, a small crew going, which is really what, what we hope to do. We really try to be respectful of our workers so that we recognize that you can't just not have somebody, just because you don't need somebody for a few weeks, you know, you can't just be laying somebody off. Since hemp and grapes allow Mark and Michael to keep a yearly harvest crew, the current guest worker program is not on the table. However, the idea of multiple businesses sharing labor does make sense. Mark believes that it would make more sense to use a guest worker program if other smaller businesses in the region were to collaborate and work together to host these workers, give them proper accommodations, and share the hours that the guest worker has over a span of several months to meet the labor demands of various businesses in the area. This would allow multiple small businesses to share labor expense and provide more opportunities for the guest worker. A win-win. Like Steve Fry, Mark wants the guest worker program to benefit small businesses and not just big ag. There was, you know, some type of, of agency that could sort of be a middle person who could, you know, many, maybe a, a, some vineyards or some smaller orchards or some hemp fields could guarantee a certain number of, of hours or days for a certain number of people. And, you know, we could add it all together and come up with, you know, a large enough group of, uh, you know, where somebody could then do the paperwork, so to speak, provide the housing. We could all subsidize that and we could all benefit from those workers, um, in, which would help in many ways because a lot of people, again, don't have full time. But if you, if you combined with other industries that, that need the same type of labor, it would, be, it would be really wonderful, sort of like an employment division type of, type of aspect, but for temporary uh, field labor. We asked Mark what he believes will be the result of a failure to improve the current guest worker programs. Are we prepared to pay the consequences? They will see it in every aspect. All of their costs will go up. That's fine if we as a society say, I will pay more for certain products and we're willing to pay that. I don't know if people are. Are you willing to pay probably so much more for strawberries that it makes it unfeasible? Anything that requires a lot of hand labor. Um, are you willing to pay so much more for, you know, going out to eat or certain restaurants or things like that? If you are, then, then fine. But just be aware, you know, you, you know there's, there's a cost on many different levels. So you may see some problems with, with how services are delivered. We're not just talking about, you know, agriculture crops, which typically is the most obvious that people think of, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. It has nothing to do with whether you have strawberries or not. I mean, if you look at healthcare, you know, if you look at, you know, you, you see a lot of people, and typically, again, it's behind the scenes. It's people that, you know, unless you pay a little bit more attention, but, you know, who's changing your sheets in a hospital? Who's changing your sheets in a hotel? Who's doing a lot of this, this labor? Again, if you pay attention, you will realize that there's a cost there. Your, our quality of life will suffer, as well as our cost of living will increase. Mark believes that we need to reform the guest worker programs so more workers can come and meet the demands of the different industries. They stay because returning is not a feasible option. He sees this not only as an example of the U.S.'s market force economy, but also an example of the power behind it since it can have a benefit for the U.S. businesses and the guest workers. Let the market work. If we're willing to pay more money to some people who are either taking a risk to come do that, do those jobs and get paid, or to go through the process of, of you know, the legal process of getting it done, then it's going to happen. 
that's, that's, it's no, labor's no different than any other product. You're talking about people that are leaving families, farms, uh, generations of history, and they're coming to get money, to work hard for a short amount of time and get money because we're willing to pay more money than they can make at home. Most of them, in my um, experience, want to do this short time and go back and farm themselves. So that what, that's what makes so much sense with the guest worker program is that in essence, you know, we are you know, just sort of taking them at the time when our needs are greatest because vice versa, people who even live here who w are willing to work during those critical you know, weeks or maybe a month or so, there's not a lot the rest of the year. Certainly not enough for them to survive in a, in a, you know, a high expense place uh, like Southern Oregon. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense necessarily. If you're, I mean, what are you gonna do? You're gonna work somewhere 10 months of the year and then go out and pick grapes for a month and a half? I mean, there's not a lot of jobs that you, know, you can do both. Lanita Witt and Susan Willow are the proud owners of Willow Witt Ranch, located just outside of Ashland, Oregon, in the Rogue Valley, just north of the Oregon-California border. Since they purchased the magical and gorgeous 440 acres in 1985, they have established a certified organic farm to continue the agricultural history of the property. They host farm stays and a campground to bring families to this magical valley and promote agrotourism. Since the two ladies work in agriculture, we asked them about the ongoing situation many farms are experiencing with finding sufficient labor to meet the demands of their industry. But when you come to uh, vegetable products, row crops that are hand harvested, especially fruit in our area, grapes, we're highly dependent on a skilled labor force that's not in the United States. It's hard to find um, Americans who are willing to do that type of labor. Mm -hmm. And th that goes to migrant workers who are dedicated, skilled, and their money, as you talked about, what they earn here is far more than they would earn in their home country. But our agriculture is highly dependent on um, migrant labor force. At Willowit Range, no guest worker program is currently implemented because they do not have sufficient housing to accommodate the workers. However, Susan believes that combining the E-Verify system with a reformed guest worker program would be the perfect solution to eliminate undocumented immigration since it protects against worker abuse helps shut down the illegal labor market and provides opportunities for seasonal guest workers to support their families while also supporting U.S. businesses. I think a, uh, a combination of an actually functional um, guest worker program, uh, which assumes that people who are coming here to work um, are honest and do want to be working and then verify through e-verify um, you end up with an employee who's ready to work who wants to work who can be here at the right time to harvest whatever you're harvesting which is so important especially in things like wine and in fruits so i think it's a great combination to make the guest worker program functional again and i think the fact that the employees are penalized if something happens if they can't be verified. I hear that there are uh, employers who will say, oh, here, I'll just write a, write a number for you. And so the employers basically get off scot-free and the employees are imprisoned, deported, never allowed to come back again. And that's hugely detrimental to the guest program. Because few domestic workers want to do this hard work, Lanita and Susan foresee consequences if there is not sufficient labor in the area of agriculture. You're not going to have it harvested. It's not going to be available to you. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. Even wine. You can't have wine without harvesting grapes. At the right and, time. And you can't have grapes without skilled pruning work at the right time of the year. The diversity in food availability, it would be imported from other places where it can be grown, um, we'd become um, an import nation of food. If you import all your food, 
uh, there is the cost of the air miles. There are also, not all countries have quite as good safety uh, as we have here. And so you may be eating something that you couldn't eat in the United States because it's banned, but it could be used in someplace else because we've been shipping them out still. Commercial agriculture in the USA is in decline, and much of this is the result of not having a reliable and legal workforce. But as we have seen during the pandemic, we should not take this trend for granted. If we continue on this trajectory, our food supply will depend more and more on imports from countries that don't adhere to the same food safety regulations or human rights standards. Outsourcing our food poses a national threat that could result in catastrophic implications in the years ahead. Recently, Southern Oregon was devastated by fires that destroyed thousands of homes. Much of this could have been prevented with proper forest management practices, but that requires a lot of labor that we simply do not have. Finally, we are facing a national housing crisis. One of the biggest challenges faced by builders today is finding enough labor. This is to a great degree slowing down the production of much needed housing and raising the cost of homes nationwide. For these industries and our economy to thrive, we need to overhaul the current guest worker programs by reducing the unnecessary red tape and cumbersome regulations for workers and employers and creating a consistent, predictable and reliable system that both U.S. businesses and potential guest workers can benefit from. As part of this improvement to the guest worker program, E-Verify must be mandatory and enforceable. We must have a system that is pro-U.S. business and pro-worker. One cannot work without the other. It is important to remember that guest workers are just that, guests. The vast majority of these workers are proud of their national identity, love their homes, and have no desire to stay. They are hardworking, self-reliant risk takers seeking an opportunity to support their families and make a better life for themselves. Sound familiar? That is my story and that of the United States. They are only seeking an opportunity to work hard in support of their dreams and ours. Our U.S. businesses need these workers, their work ethic, abilities, and spirit if we are going to continue to grow and meet the demands of our citizens and the marketplace. What can you do to help? Call or write to your U.S. Senator or U.S. Representative and ask them to propose legislation that calls for overhauling current guest worker programs and make E-Verify enforceable with employers. Lastly, share this film with your friends and sign our petition at IllegalTheProject.org.